Hi everybody. Just wanted to come on here. I just did an interview with um, The Pulse with uh, Tory Brewer's network. So um, you'll be able to see that. I think they recorded it for everyone and then we had a private one for his um, people that are uh, connected to him. Um, and I just wanted to talk to you for a second about navigating these days. Um, I know that there's a lot of stuff coming out. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we are um, we are anchored, okay? I've talked about this before. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to try and distract you. There's going to be things that are going to come out that are going to try and get your attention, try and bring you over into a weird place where you start getting anxious and you feel like that the bottom's falling out, right? The sky is falling. So what I want you to do is I want you to remember that God has this. He knows exactly what's going on. Everything is ordered according to his time and what he has for you and what he wants you to see and what he wants you to do. And right now we are in a place where God is literally, here's what I, here's what I was talking about on, on the pulse is that we've been given an investment. Okay. God has invested something in us of him and we have a responsibility to do something with the investment. We can no longer sit back and do nothing. We cannot be uh, anxiously looking around. We can't be taken off by everything that pops up on the, on the screen or anything like that. We have to learn to put our head on the chest of Jesus and listen to his heart and hear what he's got and keep your peace and keep your sanity and, and be able to pray effectively whatever you pray in faith, believing God said he'll do. So there's this time right now where we're, we've entered into a time where it is time to pray. It is time to ask. It is time to stand before the one who is able to do and will take care of and rescue your kids and us and everyone else from all the evil crap that's coming out. There's more exposure that's going to come out. Uh, there's people that say, you know, well, I don't believe in God. I believe God is supreme. Well, you know, you're going to find that out to be different when you die because there is a God and he is in control and people are praying and people are waking up and we are, we are diligent to make sure that whatever we're doing is a spirit battle. You're not dealing with flesh and blood, okay? This isn't a flesh battle. So we have to learn how to walk in the spirit learn how to be in the spirit, learn how to stay there so that we're not, we're not just tossed around by everything that comes up. There's going to be every kind of thing. And, you know, there's, there's weird stuff being exposed. Okay. Let's just go there. Uh, there's a lot of weird stuff being exposed and churches are going to, judgment begins at the house of God first. So it's going to happen. And what you got to do is just go, okay, that's your deal. God, you know, and we're going to pray for the people involved, but we're not going to be distracted by it. We're not going to be over here chomping at the bit, trying to make everybody, you know, repent. God, the Holy Spirit leads people to repentance. But what we need to do is we got to keep our eye single. We've got to keep our eye focused on the one who is in charge of these days and navigating these days and how he's going to do it. Because otherwise you're going to get anxious and you're going to be, um, you're going to be uh you're going to be freaking out, you know, if we don't keep our eyes on him. That's all. You're just going to be freaking out about everything that comes out. You know, I I feel like sometimes we're being played. Okay, I'm just going to say it. I feel like we're being played. It's almost like the news comes up and goes, well, "Look at that. Look at this thing. Look at that thing. Look at you know, over here. Look at this trial. Look at that thing. Look at this church. Look at that thing." And it's like God's going, "Hello." He's going, snapping his fingers, going, look here. Look right here. He's going, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. What am I doing? He's not bound by time. You know, he's going to do things. He's going to make things right. He's going to make crooked places straight, rough places smooth. He's going to miraculously resource you in everything that you need. He's going to make sure that you are not, if you're anxious for nothing, Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, 
thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, who will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God that goes beyond your understanding will guard you. The peace of God that goes beyond your understanding will guard your mind, which is the battleground. It'll guard your heart where anxiety tries to live. And anxiety in the heart weighs it down. So we have to be thoughtful about what are we paying attention to? Where is your focus? Where is our focus? You know, what are we doing here? And so, you know, we're we're in the process now of of training, of redirecting, of bringing people into get your head out of the sand and understand what we are dealing with, but understand that we need a bigger God. I've talked about this before. You need a bigger God. You need a bigger God. If the problems are bigger than God, you've got your focus wrong because he is totally in charge of things. He is going to do exceeding abundant above what we could dare ask or think. He's going to, to fight the battles for us. That's what he said. You know, we have a harvest coming in. There is a flood coming. There is, it's going to hit like a freight train. I'm telling you this. We've already been through one of these or more than one of these in the years we've been on the earth, you know, and we're only here for a short time. Come on. You know this. We're only here until we're not here anymore. But here's the deal. God's going to bring a revival and he's going to bring an outpouring from heaven. And the glory of God's going to be falling on people like crazy. And they're going to be screaming and freaking out and wondering what this is. And you have to be able to give an answer for what he's doing. So we are moving in times right now where God is like, I need you to pay attention to what I'm doing. Not what the news tells you. Not what Hollywood tells you. Not what other people are doing. You need to pay attention to what he's doing. He is giving out blueprints. He's giving out instructions for the new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. It's Isaiah 53. Behold, I do a new thing. And and so he's not going to do an old thing. He's going to do a new thing. We have to keep our eyes on him to find out what that is and get the blueprints of the new thing, of what he's doing. Faith is going to be a major player in the days ahead. Dreams are going to be a major player. We're going to have to learn to live by faith. We're going to have to listen. And, and there's a thing called the gift of faith. The gift of faith that's in 1 Corinthians 12 is a gift of faith. It's a faith that you can't manufacture in your own little mind. It's a gift of faith. It, that means that it, it is so strong on you that you declare something and God does it immediately. And it, your faith is, is what activates it and brings it together. It's a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not yet seen. And in order for us to see what the Father's doing, we have to go in the unseen realm. We need to go and see what he do does. That's what Jesus did. He went. He only did what he saw the Father do. He went in the unseen realm. He went in a realm where he could see what the Father was doing. And it's, it's just maturing. It's just growing up. It's just not living out of your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Not living out of those three things, your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your emotions will drag you off and take you captive. They just will. And so you got to learn how to live by the Spirit. you got to learn how to walk by the Spirit. you got to learn how to, to do what He does, think what He thinks, say what He says, and not be shaken by all this junk that's coming at you. It's coming at you fast. But so is this outpouring from heaven. It is going to come like a freight train. We've already had some experience with this a little bit in the 90s with the renewal movement where it, it was raining gold. We couldn't get it off our skin. There was oil falling. Some people say, well, I'm not buying it. Well, don't buy it. I, I lived it. <laughs> Other people lived it. We know what this is like. It was definitely from God. And it was, it was the fruit was evident. People were saved, healed, delivered. They were set free. They, got, they stopped doing uh, drugs. They stopped drinking. They stopped having sex, you know, these teenage kids. People were falling on their face and they were crying out to God. They were getting themselves right with him. And it was powerful. And it was life-changing. And so we've got to learn how to do this. We've got to learn how to get before him and stop letting everything take us captive. We have, in fact, we're, we're supposed to take every thought captive that, that it excels or it, it elevates itself above the, the knowledge of God. We're supposed to take every thought captive. And so we don't do that. We just We just listen to it and pay attention and then stew over it and freak out and, and have a fit and then get on Facebook and start yapping about it and do all these things. And you're just empowering it. What you focus on, you make room for. What you fear, you empower. You know, that's John Paul. That was years ago. And so 
we're in this time right now where we just got to watch what we're doing. Got to we got to be careful that we're not anxious for things. That we're not trying to get out there and and blow a trumpet and do all these weird things. Settle yourself down. Get before him. Learn how to hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. He didn't say, my sheep know my word, even though you do need to know his word. He said, my sheep know my voice. So when he says something, we need to know it's him. And we need to be able to do what he says. Every outreach I do has to has goes hand in hand with this. You know, I have to learn to hear his voice. Otherwise, I can't go in there and I can't just shoot from the hip and just blab off and say whatever I want to whoever I want. You know, because that's not my assignment. My assignment is my sheep know my voice. And and also it'll help you in instructing other people in this day, in this time, when it says men's hearts will fail them for fear. Fear disappears when you have faith. And when you have the, your, your cast and your gaze upon the one who holds his, the whole world in his hand. In fact, he measures the universe by the spans of his hand. People say, well, you know, I'm going to ask the universe. Well, why don't you go beyond that? Because the universe is measured in the spans of his hand. That's in Isaiah. And so we just have to think about what are we doing and why are we doing it and how are we going to get this done and how are we going to navigate days ahead? First off, do not have knee-jerk reactions to things you hear. Don't do it. It's just not worth it. It's going to fade away. It's just something to get your focus off. It's something to get you all stirred up and worked up and have a hissy fit and get together and start yapping about it. It's like the Christian view. It's weird. Um, I like that Elon Musk said he thought he'd buy the view so he could cancel it. I think that's a good idea. Anyway, we have to just learn how to, to get together and pray in faith, believing. Get together, pray in faith, believing. If you don't believe what you pray, then you you're not going to get what you need. You're not going to get what you're praying for. You have to believe that you have it. You got to believe it. I mean, this is the Bible. It's simple. This is a simple Bible. <laughs> you have to pray and believe what you pray and believe that he heard you. Otherwise, it becomes redundant, repetitive prayer, you know. So just do that. And then, you know, learn to hear his voice. When you hear his voice, you can go anywhere you need to go. You know, I'm going to start a dream show. I just am. I've already got the equipment ordered we're going to start going on college campuses. We're going to start getting dreams from people, from these kids that are being persuaded to believe everything except the truth. <laughs> if, if I can't do anything else, I can do that. And maybe by one or two or three or 20 or 30 or how many ever people, you know, I'm going to get some information and get some truth into them. And they're going to be able to hear and see what God is doing. And, and there were people all the time back in the 70s that didn't think God was there. They didn't think he, ex I didn't, I didn't even know if he was there, you know, because I was just in a church. It was dead. But then the, the Jesus movement hit. And then all of a sudden, God was not only there, he was active, he was present. He was powerful. And it was life changing. It was, it was darkness to light all the way around. So I'm just encouraging you, don't get yourself into a fizz. Don't start getting distracted. Don't let this crap and all the stuff that's coming out, don't let it take your attention. Don't let it take you captive and be and take your attention. God's got a whole lot more things he's saying than what you're hearing. He's got a whole lot more things he's saying right now than what you're hearing. And we need to get ourselves prepared for what's coming from heaven. And it's going to be good and powerful. But it is also going to be challenging. Because, you know, we don't like letting God be God. We don't want him to do things like that makes us uncomfortable. We want him to do things our way that give, you know, and, and I was just talking about that. I said that we've been pacified long enough. We've had a pacifier in our mouth, you know, it's like, get that out of there and let's start being vocal about what, what we're meant to do and how we're meant to do it. And let's be kind and let's be available to him to let the love of God pour out through us instead of our human and, and soulish reactions to behavior that is contrary to what they're meant for and what is destructive to them. You know, they haven't known anything else. A lot of them have just been beat up since the time they were little. So we just need to be the church, be be God's love to them, right? Because that's that's what's going to draw people in. It's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. So anyway... 
I just wanted to encourage you. I just had a few minutes. I'm so sorry. I have not been on here like I should be. I have been going 120. I feel like I've been in a, uh, I've been in chasing, I don't know. There's been all kinds of things coming in my life. I get one thing dealt with and something else comes in. So I thought I just did this little thing for um, Pastor Tory Brewer at Open Door Church in uh, Pulse. And I thought I'm just going to come on here and, and hit, hit you guys up for a second. So I love you. I, I want to encourage you. I've got training coming up. I've got a dream school coming up in Austin, uh, May 4th. I've got a, a doing the stuff coming up in um, Northern California this first week of um June. I've got other things that we're trying to get planned for the summer, and um, it'll all be on my events page, cindymcgill.org, cindymcgill.org, cindymcgill.org. Sign up for the shout. We're going to get that going again. Um, pray for us as we get this dream show off the ground, um, and we're just going to go out, and you'll see it, and we're going to have it av available for you to look at, to see, and to be a part of it. I'm going to train you how to do dreams so that you can interpret dreams because people love it and they won't shut you down if you're interpreting in the room or if you're answering a, 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 a need in their life, right? All right. Um, so uh, be praying for that um, and we're going to get you trained. Um, I'm making all my training this year free. All of it. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm like, well, bless God, you know, I <laughs> just make it all free. And so if you come, Rick, it's going to be a, a love offering. And I just am trusting that God's going to meet all of our needs and finances. And thank you to those of you who've been giving because it's so helpful. We've been able to do so much and get things done and get things ready for the dream shows and get our outreaches uh, going. We've got more outreaches that are coming up. Yes, you can go with me, but you've got to be trained. I'm not just going to take you because you want to go. I'm going to take you because you have hunger to go and because you're ready to go and that you you will do what it, we need to do in order to get the job done so all right um sign up for the shout go on the dream or on my website you can get the it, beginner dream school intermediate dream school um my friend abby does the advanced dream school and the dream forum um she does those and uh we're also going to be doing some training for people that don't live in the country um, so that you can be trained on how to do the words that work, words that work. I have another book I'm working on right now. We're going to try and get that out, um, hopefully by the end of June. Um, and it's going to be, uh, another, you know, s installment of training and activation and how to live your life right now and how not to get swept up by every window doctrine and everything that comes down, um, you know, so you'll be able to, to navigate. Okay. All right. God bless you guys. I will talk with you soon. Okay. Bye.